During the 19th century, occasional stories appeared in the American and British press about children who were able to survive without eating. These so-called fasting girls developed a certain celebrity, with some proclaiming that they were possessed of religious or magical powers. Here we explore the phenomenon of the Victorian fasting girls. Fasting or the deliberate abstention from food has been practiced by most societies in certain contexts throughout human history. Some people fast for medical reasons, such as when tests need to be done and digestion will compromise the result, or when individuals undertake days of a juice or water diet to cleanse their system. However, typically fasting has been associated with religion. Muslims fast from dawn to sunset during Ramadan, and there are certain situations within faiths such as Buddhism and Hinduism where fasting is encouraged, so too with Christianity. Indeed, fasting and temperance were key parts of Christian life in the medieval and early modern periods. They have largely been abandoned today, but as recently as the 19th century, there were many people who claimed to be in closer commune with God through fasting. These were the fasting girls of Victorian society. In the second half of the 19th century, stories began to spread about mysterious girls who could survive for periods of weeks or even years without any food or water. In general, they first gained local renown in their communities in Britain, the United States and Canada, before often acquiring an international audience. Also, as their fame increased, people would travel from far and wide to see them, and pay money to do so. Journalists and other writers came to witness their bizarre abstinence themselves, and wrote about them, often puzzled as to how they managed to go so long without eating, and if the girls in question were in fact blessed with religious or magical powers. There were precedents to these kinds of abilities in the Middle Ages. For example, Catherine of Siena, a lay member of the Dominican religious order, gained renown in the late 15th century, in part for her extreme fasting and had been deemed to be a holy woman. In a similar vein, the fasting girls of the Victorian era were soon believed to have religious or mystic powers, with some of those who came to see them believing that they were witnessing miracles. Yet somewhat suspiciously, a few of the fasting girls or their parents would charge visitors for clairvoyant readings and other aspects of their supposedly mystical abilities. So, in order to get a better understanding of just what was involved, let's take a look at some of the foremost examples of fasting girls who gained renown and infamy during the 19th century. One of the more famed fasting girls in America was Mary Fancher, generally known as Molly Fancher. Her story is genuinely very strange. She was born in 1848 in Brooklyn, New York but beginning in the mid-1860s when she was a teenager, a series of unfortunate events occurred. First, she was thrown from a horse while riding in Prospect Park and struck her head against the pavement. Thereafter, she developed headaches and fatiguing spells. Then, a year later, she was dragged underneath a Fulton Street trolley car, which she fell under while stepping out of it. This injured her spine and she was rendered quite ill by it. However, Fancher was still able to function in day-to-day -day life. This is until the 3rd of February, 1866, a few months after the Fulton Street incident, when she had some sort of episode during which she seemingly became half-possessed and ended up writhing around on the floor of the Francher family's kitchen. She was immediately carried to her bed and she would remain there for the next 50 years. Francia soon developed a reputation for both psychic powers and endless fasting. She was occasionally force-fed, but on other occasions, she allegedly went months on end without food. She was often in a trance-like state, and developed a reputation for being a clairvoyant when this occurred. Soon, the newspapers were referring to her as the Brooklyn Enigma. The great showman P.T. Barnum even tried to get her to join his show, but she refused. Some years later, her trances subsided, and she then developed five different personalities, 
called Idol, Sunbeam, Ruby, Pearl and Rosebud. Eventually though, in the course of the 1880s and 1890s, the press lost interest in her and she faded from public consciousness. It's entirely unclear to this day what happened. Was she faking all of this behaviour to earn money through her clairvoyant readings? Was she mentally disturbed? Was her fasting a sign of anorexia? In Fancher's case, it is really hard to tell. One of the most famous instances of a fasting person of the 19th century involved Anne Moore, although she wasn't a girl. Moore was in her 40s by the time she became famous in the autumn of 1808, after she'd been observed to not eat for 16 days and nights at her home in the village of Tutbury in Staffordshire in England. The purpose of the watch was to validate her claims, which had been ongoing for years by that point. Indeed, Moore's fame had spread throughout Britain and other countries, like the United States, and it was even believed that she had existed for five years without food at one point. Although not a fasting girl per se, Moore's story is consequential because she was an inspiration for some of those who later in the 19th century, like Fanshawe, began to conceive of their abstinence from nourishment as a religious gift. They would have been surprised to learn, perhaps, that Moore was a complete fraud. She had developed elaborate ways to smuggle food into her bedroom and consume it, even while being watched. It's believed that these were possible with the aid of her daughter, who would put a towel soaked with broth over her mouth and conveyed food from her mouth to her mother's while kissing her. Despite being a fraud, Moore gained a notable reputation, thanks to her supposedly miraculous fasting, and consequently, generated a lot of income. She died in 1813 at the age of 53, just months after being supervised by local writer and clergyman, Lay Richmond. Throughout the 19th century, there were many other fasting girls, and many of these proved fatal. One was Lenora Eaton, a girl from New Jersey from an upper middle class family. Her claims were put to a test in 1881, but a little over a month after the observers arrived, she died. Others still were revealed as frauds, just like Anne Moore decades earlier. For instance, eight years after Eaton's death to the north in Quebec and Canada, Josephine Marie Bedard was discovered to have fabricated her claims. When observers came to her home, they saw food being smuggled to her, and in one instance, she even stole food from their own plates. As far as fraud goes, this wasn't the most sophisticated of operations. Finally, though she lived considerably later than the others, Therese Newman, a German who was born in Bavaria in 1898, is often considered a late fasting girl. In 1918, she was partially paralysed after falling off a stool. This was just the first of many accidents and illnesses to befall Newman who claimed to be able to repeatedly heal herself. She also maintained that she'd abstained from eating and drinking from 1927 onwards, after she was visited allegedly by a saint, who told her she no longer needed food or drink. That year, Newman was observed over the space of two weeks by a medical team, who wanted to test the veracity of her claims. They did not observe her eating or drinking during this time, though curiously, she had gained weight by the end of the two weeks. She died in September 1962, aged 64 from cardiac arrest. Despite the tragedy surrounding many of these fasting girls, undoubtedly, the most heartbreaking case of a fasting girl was Sarah Jacobs. Jacobs was a Welsh girl who was born in Carmarthenshire on the 12th of May 1857. She was from an impoverished family as her father, Evan Jacobs, was a poor subsistence farmer. One day, Sarah stopped eating and drinking, and word of this quickly spread around Wales. Eventually, the news of her alleged fasting reached the media, and a medical team of nurses was sent to the Jacobs' house to observe Sarah. However, where it seems likely that in the case of Newman and some of the other fasting girls, that food and drink was somehow being secretly given to them, even during these observation periods. In the case of Sarah Jacobs, 
her parents Evan and Hannah Jacobs seem to have actually decided to not feed her during the period of observation. Sadly, she died during the observation as she had genuinely foregone food and drink for over a week. The lack of water was what caused her death as she probably could have survived the observation period without food. She was just 12 years old when she passed and was said to have gone without food for a total of 113 weeks. During the autopsy, evidence was found that she had a water bottle in her bed, but had been unable to open it while being observed. For their part in the attempted ruse, her parents were tried and convicted of manslaughter. Though Wadley, no charges were brought against the medical team who actually observed her dying in front of them. All of this begs the question, just what was the real explanation for the fasting girls and their actions? As we can see in the case of Anne Moore and Josephine Marie Badad, fraud was often the goal. As the fame of the fasting girls and women spread in the 19th century, money could be made from people paying entry to the house of the fasting girl or selling stories to newspapers. Thus, there was an incentive to simply make up the whole thing. Many people believed these were religious interventions, and that certain fasting girls were in commune either with God or some demons. It should be remembered here that the spiritualist movement, which placed emphasis on religious miracles and other elements of almost magical belief, was at its peak in the mid-19th century. It would be easy to dismiss this as ridiculous superstition today, but in the case of someone like Molly Fanshawe, it must have been difficult to explain it any other way. This, after all, was a young woman who stayed under the scrutiny of the media for years in a trance-like state and in total spent 50 years confined to her home, often producing psychic revelations and clairvoyant readings. It must have seemed to many people that the Brooklyn Enigma genuinely was experiencing some religious intervention. However, the most logical explanation in some instances is probably the most likely, and it seems that for many of the fasting girls, the problem was their own mental health. Most scholars have now come to the conclusion that the phenomena of the fasting girls was at least partially caused by a type of 19th century anorexia nervosa, an eating disorder whereby individuals will abstain from eating as a result of having a poor body image and a wholly excessive fear of gaining weight. Typically speaking, people believe that anorexia is a condition which emerged in the late 20th century in response to pressure being placed on young women to be thin. However, from the perspective of the fasting girls, it is significant to note that the term anorexia nervosa first came into use in 1873, when Sir William Gall, an English physician, first studied it systematically and gave the condition its name. Thus, right around the time that the fasting girls were coming to public attention, the condition of anorexia was first becoming a sufficient enough problem within Britain that physicians were beginning to study it. What is plausible is that fasting girls like Sarah Jacobs and Lenora Eaton were possibly anorexic and this was the initial cause of their reputation for surviving without eating. Later though, this would have tragic consequences in their cases. Consequently, beyond the myths and rumours of religious communication with the celestial through their fasting, or figures like Fancha and Jacobs having magical powers, some of the fasting girls were most likely what they appeared to be. Examples of the first infamous cases of anorexia in modern society. Thank you everyone for watching this video on the fasting girls, I hope you found it interesting. Let me know what you thought of the case and all of the girls down below in the comments. If you have any suggestions, also leave them in the comments. I hope you guys are subscribed and have notifications turned on so you get all my videos as soon as I upload them. Anyway, that's all from me, so I'll see all of you in the next Forgotten Life. Thanks.